Welcome back to How to Be a Better DM, the official podcast of Monsters.Rent. I'm Justin Lewis. And I'm Tanner Wayland. And we are here to help you tell better stories for yourself and your players as you dungeon master sessions of D&D, Dungeons and Dragons. We'd like to give you some quick announcements. We actually have one before the show. And then after the show, if you want to stick around, we have some more announcements then as well. Uh, but first, let's talk about this. Tired of being alone? Are you tired of not having any of your players understand you? Are you tired of never truly belonging? Well, you're in luck. All you need to do is join the Guild. The Guild is a unique and exclusive experience that is only open to Dungeon Masters. It is a full community focused on helping ease your DMing burdens. Want to meet other DMs? Join the Guild. Want to discuss your homebrew ideas with people who would appreciate it instead of just telling your cat? Join the guild! Want to find a place where all your wildest dreams will come true? Join the guild! Go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free. Wait, that can't be right. Chuck, Chuck, can you check this again? Is this supposed to be... What? Oh, it's... They're serious? It's free? Oh. Okay, all right. Yes, go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free, even though they are crazy for giving this away for free. Common side effects may include burping, sneezing, laughing, breathing, hearing, listening, tasting, farting, critting, sarcasm, and in extreme cases, explosive diarrhea. Awesome. With that out of the way, we can get into today's show. Hello, and welcome to How to Be a Better DM. My name is Tanner Wayland, and together... We will learn about how to prepare the best adventures and environments for our players to enjoy. I hope you're all doing well uh, in this new year, making lots of goals, and uh, hopefully having a great start to the year. And you know what? Even if you're not, uh, you can always do that anytime. You can always turn things around any time of year. Heaven knows that I've uh, done that a lot. <laughs> uh, but we're not going to do any announcements uh, beyond uh, just jumping in at the start. Uh, so the topic today. It is family relationships in D&D. So what, what am I talking about? I, I'm not talking about who you play with because, you know, that's, I, I don't know if that's really relevant, whether it's a friend or family member you're playing with. No, I, I'm rather talking about created family in, in relationships within the game. That could be two of your uh, player, player's characters could be family members within the context of the game or one of your players and uh, and an NPC, you know, whatever the context is, family relationships are, I think that they're such a potential like boon for your campaign and they can add a lot of depth that you wouldn't find normally. However, I've seen a lot of DMs kind of when they're given like the metaphorical golden goose of like two players being like, hey, we want to be brothers or father and, and daughter or, or who knows what, right? When they're giving, given that, I think DMs tend to treat uh, it similar to any old relationship, you know, like, oh, uh, they're basically just two adventuring party, party members in the end, right? And I think that that's a real missed opportunity. So... Uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to uh, how to prepare to get the most av out of fa a familial relationship within a, a campaign. So, first off, uh, it's I would say that a family relationship it's not just flavoring for the campaign; it is a dynamic. And and what does that mean? I mean that it is kind of a tool uh, through which you can do a lot of cool story arcs have a lot of fun times. Um, but similar, I mean, we've talked about this before in past episodes, when you're creating characters and finding out backstory, there's always the chance that DMs will, you know, underprepare or not get their players engaged and creating on their own, uh, and maybe even not incorporate a player's backstory into the ma main campaign. And when that happens, all that work and all that potential uh, kind of just goes out the window sometimes. And, and, you know, there's some campaigns where that's totally fine, right? Especially if it's a one-shot, you don't have time to really incorporate as much of the backstory. Uh, or even if it's, you know, just like a small homebrew, 
you know, two to three session kind of game. I think the more you can incorporate uh, of a player character's backstory into the campaign or game, the better you're going to, the better time your players are going to have. And that's doubly true for a family relationships. So uh, now that I've kind of laid the groundwork, understanding that, you know, you can get a lot more, uh, I guess the question is like how um, you should capitalize on it. So first off, I would say that uh, an important part or the most necessary part to capitalize on a family relationship and create amazing stories is it starts in character creation. Now, uh, you're probably thinking, Tanner, that's obvious. Stop talking. Uh, But what I would say is that, you know, character creation, if you think that just because two players have a relationship that you should be asking them the exact same amount of questions that you would ask uh, another player whose character, you know, just wandered in off the street, you know, within the story, then I think that you're, that's where a lot of DMs trip up is just right at the start. See, when you have kind of the base questions that you're going to ask about characters and you're going to ask the players, you're going to be like, hey, where are they from? Why are they adventuring? What's important to them? What drives them? Uh, what kind of goals do they have? Uh, you know, what class, the basic kind of things like that, right? You're going to ask that of every player at the table. Um, but during, you know, the session zero or the character creation, if two of your players either would like, it it makes sense. uh, Oh, just kind of as a side note here, I would say it's family relationships. Aren't something that should necessarily, necessarily be shoehorned into a campaign. But if a player comes to you with that idea, go with it. You know, they're offering you a great opportunity. And if they're excited about it, then it never be like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if it would fit. Just go with it. It's going to be a good time. Uh, and okay, now getting back to the main thought. So if a player is into it and they're like, hey, let's, you know, me and this other character uh, or me and I, I want an, like an NPC family or family member uh, in the world then that's a wonderful opportunity to ask uh, more questions, frankly. You shouldn't just stop at the basics. You should ask questions like, you know, about core memories. That's something really important. Because if you think about what defines a familial relationship versus, you know, just casual strangers or, or just, you know, acquaintances, families have a much deeper understanding and connection because they've experienced so many things, uh, so many more things together, right? Uh, for good or or bad, uh, which is another kind of caveat here. Not caveat, rather nuance is that not all family relationships are positive, sadly. Um, but but that's kind of where the player can define that uh, by and asking a question like, "Hey, tell me two or three core memories that you have." with this other character or NPC, then what's that, what that's going to do is, is it's going to allow you, if it's an NPC, you're going to be able to embody it a lot better. Um, you're also, and if it's another character, then if you ask that question of each of them, uh, each of those two characters or three, you know, who knows, it could be a whole family uh, within an adventuring party. party. But if you ask that question and you're like, hey, tell me some core memories that you have with this other family member of yours, then that's going to give some really good flavor. And it's also going to help you um, plan around that and, and just it'll help them role play in the scenario. Uh, the other option is that you don't do that. You don't find out, you know, what annoys uh, them about the <laughs> what the other uh, character does that annoys them. You don't find out, you know, if they used to play certain things together or do certain pranks on others or if they've had sticking points in their relationship and kind of continual arguments maybe about how they're doing, you know, running their life. You don't find that out if you don't ask those questions. And the worst part is that if you don't ask, you know, a lot of players, I think some of them are really good at, at, you know, taking the initiative and doing that. But most of the time, they're kind of waiting for you as the DM to uh, 
put your best foot forward and then they'll match it. Um, it, it's just one of the, it's kind of the mantle of the DM is that the players, uh, will typically ma- follow your lead in terms of how uh, in depth to get with their character creation. So if you ask them the right questions about core memories, about, you know, the nuances of their relationship, that gives them an excuse and also the motivation to find out that out for themselves. And then once you're in the game, you don't have to go crazy with, you know, you will still plan, you know, how to incorporate that relationship and that backstory into the campaign. But the players are going to do a lot of it themselves, right? Like, if you really have them create these core memories, and then you put one of them in danger, you know, one of their characters in danger, the other one, it's not going to be have some weird sense of responsibility. They're going to want to go save that other, their family member, because they, they know that that's in character and they've spent the time and gotten the motivation from you to realize how deep that relationship is. Um, and then finally, uh, you know, I would say after character creation, it's just check-ins, you know, do check-ins regularly. We've said this so many times, if you do in-between session check-ins, then that's going to help your players keep in mind uh, what that kind of relationship is like for them, that family relationship. And more importantly, and this is kind of what I want to uh, close on, same as any adventure, if players have a relationship, and I would say even a friendly relationship, but certainly a family relationship within, in a campaign set, setting, what they can do is, you know, whether you find out a goal from them, uh, like as in you directly ask them, it's like, hey, if you had a goal for your relationship, or is there some, some development in the relationship your character has always wanted? You could ask that question. Uh, Another way to do it is just find out the sticking points, like I was saying before, uh, between uh, the two players, right? Or two characters, rather. If you find that out, uh, let's say, oh, it's a mother and a son, and the mother has always worried that the son is... uh, isn't going to be happy once she's gone because he's kind of... Uh, very needy or dependent or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm throwing out an example here. But if that was kind of the dynamic, then a goal, whether the player tells you or not, a goal that you could kind of into it and maybe work towards is helping that relationship change so that the mother realizes that her son can make it on his own uh, and maybe even forms like romantic relationship with an NPC or, or, or something to the point where there's that kind of catharsis of making up or seeing a hoped for relationship development come to fruition. Uh, and, and that's where I think those in-between session check-ins really shine, you know, cause as players go along and if you're asking them yes about general campaign stuff, but also checking in on the relationship, then that will help them be more in the mode of the campaign. It's going to help you know what kind of developments and relational goals you could kind of push them towards, and that's going to make a more rich setting and campaign in general. So here's the great news, though. Some of you are thinking, uh, not all of my players have you know, family, family relationships. True. Absolutely true. But you know, what they do have is your characters all have relationships with with each other. They could have family relationships show up later in a campaign. Whatever it is, I think that you as a DM, your goal is to help the players feel as immersed as possible. And in relationships is one of the best ways to do that, right? And so I would really invite you as you're thinking about this to, you know, maybe at the start of your next session, just ask the question, hey, do any of you want to be family members? Or do, and then even if they say no, then ask each of them individually while they're doing their character creation, be like, hey, do you have any family within the world? 
know, if you ask that question, then it'll tie their character to the world a lot more, which aside from hopefully uh, making it so that they are more involved, uh, aside from that, it will also just open the door to them wanting to be like, oh, maybe, maybe there isn't a family, but there is someone that I'm interested in romantically, or I have a really good friend. If you ask that question, then it just branches out to a lot of other opportunities. Because family relationships, you know, people nowadays have a lot of found family. And and, and the great news is that when you're creating a D&D campaign, if you bring up the idea of a deeper relationship, um, then I think players will naturally want to find that some way, whether it's in a family relationship or not. And if they do, and if they're willing to create within the world that kind of deeper relationship, then that's going to be wonderful fodder for you to create stories, create conflict, uh, create motivation. Uh, so make sure that you don't don't sleep on the on the family dynamics and relationships within a DN, D&D campaign. So go out there, get crazy with, you know, just inviting people to be family members. I'm joking. You don't have to go crazy with that. But if you do, and if you have that opportunity, make it special. Okay? Well, in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful week. And let's roll initiative. Thank you for listening to today's show. Uh, we really appreciate your support and your patronage. We have a few more announcements to go over. Uh, first... Did you ever fall in love with the library as a kid? It was a place where you could experience a thousand stories without having to buy a thousand books. That is what Monsters at Rent can do for your D&D campaign. You can rent and swap out as many quality miniature monsters and creatures for your D&D party as you could ever want without having to buy them. You can rescue villagers from a kobold camp or lead your party through the fighting forest or many more adventures. We're coming out with new bundles all the time. Just sign up for our subscription to get access to your own personal library of minis. Go to monsters.rent to find out more. That's the website, monsters, with an S, dot rent. Get your library pass to a world of minis today. We also wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Stardust and Dragons. I'm going to let one of the cast of Stardust and Dragons, Christian Hatcher, and his crew tell you a little bit more about it. This August, a new adventure podcast is coming to a platform near you, filled with action. You one of the two of them. We can't keep he, taking he hits like that. Drama. Everything that she's been doing, everything, she, everything she's going to do finally sets in and stardust help help (coughs) someone please find out more about this epic odyssey at stardustanddragons.com where adventure awaits in the stars that's all the announcements we have today again thank you so much for everything you do for us you make this show possible like we said before we'll be back next week with another great episode and until then let's go ahead and roll initiative